Hello drafters. Content's going to be a little bit different recently because I've just moved into a new place and it has this awesome double garage shed that I can turn into my dream YouTube studio. So I'm not going to be able to do the typical tutorial stuff. I will if I can, but I thought I would at least document the process of turning this shed into my dream YouTube studio. So anyway, Let's take you inside so you can see exactly what kind of work is involved with getting this to the state I want it in. So this is the first room. And this is gonna be my office area. So this first room is about three meters by six meters or 18 square meters. And as you can see, it's just an empty shell at the moment. We've got concrete floor, white painted walls with nothing on them uh, and just my work desk and that's about it at the moment. And the plan is to probably turn this into uh, what I'm picturing is a nice dark theme paint with some wooden hybrid flooring and just some wooden accents around. There's going to be plenty I have to fix up like obviously this door is very creaky and needs a good clean and the walls need to be refreshed and the lighting needs to be done. There's gonna be a lot to do and it's gonna be a good fun project to document the journey of getting this built to the way I want. One of the first things that I'm gonna do is get some electrical coming in to fit out because there are some power points in here and lighting, but it's a bit kind of all over the place. So I've got one here, I've got a point there, I've got a point up there, a point down there and a light switch that doesn't do anything. So there is a lot of work involved. And also as we go into the next area, which is gonna be my workshop area, uh, the electrical needs to be redone there as well. So electrical is one of the first things I'll do. For, following that, I'll probably going to self-level the floor, put some hybrid flooring in, fix up the trim, and then paint the walls, and then start putting a big uh, desk in this area. And this will be my office room. So I'm gonna have my computer in here, some big desks in the back, my 3D printers, stuff on the wall. And it's gonna look really awesome. I'll probably show you something in Prime AI, a really cool feature where you can take a room, take a picture of it, and put it through this AI image generator. Give it some prompting and it will spit out some really cool results. So I've been using Prome AI, who is kind of a sponsor of the channel. So I definitely recommend checking out Prome AI. Just check the description of the video for a free trial and free credits to use. It's a really cool tool. Let's take you into the next room, which is going to be the workshop and show you what I plan to do in there. So this is my workshop space. This is going to be a really cool room for setting up all my 3D printers, my laser cutters. Uh, I'm gonna have all my workshop tools for woodworking in here. I've been busy buying a bunch of tools. Now, no hate, I am buying a lot of Ryobi tools because I find their prices are just really reasonable for the performance you get. I mean, I could spend more and get like Milwaukee or whatever, but they just, commands such a price that I think Ryobi are good tools for what I need. So please spare the hate on the Ryobi tools. I'll show you some of the deals that I've been picking up. Um, Facebook Marketplace is an awesome place to find cheap secondhand tools. I often get lucky and find things that are basically brand new condition. Like I have an 18 volt table saw from Ryobi, which is still new in the box and I got it for about half price. So that was a great deal. I got a Ryobi thicknesser. Now this one is a little more beat up, but I got that for a fraction of the price. So usually about $600, I got that for $200. And I also got some other tools uh, that I've been picking up. So I'm slowly starting to fit this out. Uh, I need to get a miter saw. I'm going to get some more woodworking tools like um, a router and just the plan is to have like a big miter saw table in the back here, close to the window. I'm gonna extend some table out here and hopefully I'm gonna build all this so it'd be cool to document what I do in that space as well. And then I can, with the laser cutters, um, close to a window or even just extracting, I'll punch a hole in the wall and just extract it out straight outside. 
There's just so much I can do in this room. It's really exciting. Uh, this area, I plan to do a really nice YouTube feature wall. So when I'm standing and doing videos like this, I have something interesting in the background. I can get a big table in, we can do some overhead shots. Uh, I'm really excited. It's, it's so cool to have this kind of space. And the size of this room is even bigger than the last one. So we've still got the about six meter length and it's probably a good five and a half or six meters in the other direction. So almost 36 square meters, if my maths is correct, in this space alone. And the plan again for this is number one, get the electrical in. So that's gonna be done both the office and the workshop studio. Get some points fitted out. There are some points around, but it's just not enough. So I want them everywhere I can. Uh, the car also needs to come in here. So I'm gonna get a bit of a basic EV charger in the corner. The floor, I'm probably going to epoxy instead of vinyl hybrid flooring, which you can see here. Uh, this hybrid flooring I picked up about 50 square meters for $200 on Marketplace. This is all Australian dollars, by the way. So that's gonna cover the office quite easily. But in here, I'll probably do one of those epoxy uh, flake sort of fi concrete finishes. That will be a fun, interesting project. And then I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the same black theme in here, or I might lighten it up a bit as well. I'm not too sure. Now, one of the other projects I need to do, I'll turn the camera around so you can see, because to actually get the car in here, we're going to have to make some modifications. So on this side, you can see that the electric garage door, uh, originally this was just sealed in with plasterboard and it was just a single room. So you couldn't actually access the garage door. When the previous tenants moved out, they cut a small hole in here so they could get everything out because this place is just full of junk. And it's not wide enough to get my car in just yet. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of DIY on this and we might get straight into it in this video to make it you know, part one of the project build. Um, but I'm basically gonna move these uh, posts out a little bit to widen it to the width of the door. The height is good and then I can just cut back the plasterboard a bit and we should be set. I just realized I have no nails, so I'm gonna to have to pick up some nails before I do that. And another major thing I wanna change in here is this bottom section of plasterboard. It's this really weird kind of wood fence style. It's just not attractive at all. So, and the trim along the edges as well. I just wanna get all that refined, nice clean walls to paint and do what I want. So I think the first project after I run over to Bunnings and get some wood nails is just moving these frames out a bit and then cutting back this. So I actually picked up some tools from Roby today. So we got the Roby HP reciprocating saw. So this is their high performance model and we got some extra blades. So the one I want in here is the metal blade because I need to cut into those frames to cut the nails back so I can just pull it pull the frame apart and then I can move that over easily. Uh, this isn't sponsored by Ryobi, but if they are watching and they want to sponsor me, hey, get in contact with me because I like your tools and I'll take more if you want to send them my way. Anyway, and something else I picked up today is this Ryobi 18 volt uh, four liter portable shop vac. So this is a wet dry vacuum. It's great for little walk workshops like this where you need to just do some project stuff, clean up some mess, clean up some water, whatever. Um, watching some videos on this, it seems like a decent little unit. I mean, it's not going to be as good as a dedicated plug-in type shop vac, but for what I need, and I'll be keen to follow up later on to see how this suits my purposes. But this seems like a great little unit for just general around the house stuff, cleaning car, cleaning the shop, connecting it to some of your tools to take off some of that dust. Uh, it seems like a really cool little unit. So I'm keen to get this out as well. All right, so I just got back from Bunnings. I picked up some nails, some bullet heads, 75 by 3.15 millimeter. Hopefully these are the correct what nails I need for wood framing. It's something that I'm learning as I go. So I'm looking at things like online or ChatGPT. So if I'm wrong, point it out in the comments so I can learn from my mistake. The other thing I wanna get into is let's open this up and have a look because I'll be using this to cut through the nails of the frame so I can pull the frames out. So let's open it up and take a look. So on this kit, you only get the reciprocating saw itself. This is the HP model, so it's a compact one. It's not one of the big ones. 
uh, and it's the more high performance one. So there's a lock feature on the side here, stops you from pulling the trigger, unlocked, and then you have your blade uh, and the battery point. So it comes with one blade, which is a wood blade, but we don't need that. We actually need one for cutting through nails. So I'll go grab that. So here we go, I picked up this one from Bunnings as well. This one you get a four set of blades, so you have a metal, which is what we're gonna use. You can also do pruning with this, which is pretty cool, so I can get out into the gardening and cut down some big thick planks. It's a very long blade for that. And then you have another metal, so a smaller one, and a wood. So we'll probably use this smaller 152 mil, six inch metal blade. I don't think I'm gonna need that long. So let's get this one out and then install it into here. All right, there we go, metal blade is out. And then we just have to install this in. Okay, I think I know what to do. So I think what you wanna do is you pull this lever up, insert it, pull it back down, check that it's in there, and that looks good. So let's put a battery in there. So I'm gonna take one of these four amp Ryobi batteries. Um, it is heavy, I mean, it's not a light tool. Let's give it a try. Uh, lock off and start. Very cool. Alrighty, so now let's try and get these frames out. So let's see if I can show you what I've got to work with here. So I'm gonna go a bit of a handy cam at the moment. So on the back of the wall here, you can see it's exposed. And we've got to cut through the nails at the top of that. And there'll be some nails in here that I need to cut off and then down at the base. And then I can go and push that beam all the way over, at least until there's a power point down the bottom. So I'll probably go to there. And if you look on this side, it's probably going to finish just before that light switch and then come up to almost the top of the ceiling, just there. And then this side will go a bit further over and there's no power point in the way, but it needs to come to the edge of the door, the garage door there. No lighting behind here, so you might not see anything, but I need to cut the nail from the top there and there, and then at the bottom. And I'm also gonna have to cut this wood at the bottom as well and move it away. There is a bolt just, uh, where is it? Here, there's a bolt there into the concrete that I need to remove. And I think there was one in there as well, or maybe it was on that side. So once I do that, I mean, the height is already at where I want, but I need it wider so I can get the car in because the car's not gonna fit through that at the moment. This thing is awesome, it just cuts through those nails so easily. A lot of power and still full battery. I mean, I've only used it for a few minutes, but I got that first beam out. So now I've got a feel for it, I can do the other side and we'll knock through that one really quick. quite a bit actually, it's quite nice. It's got a bit of a rotation as well. Uh, on off switch on the top, and you can hook this around as well like that. Uh, the good thing about this is you can both use it as suction for a vacuum, but also you can attach the hose on the other end and use that as a blower if you want to blow things away. Uh, being a wet and dry vacuum, it can both suck up this kind of stuff and also water as well. Uh, the battery pops in the top here, and then to unclip it, we simply 
like a uh, toolbox latch system and that should just pop right off. There we go. So inside your dust bin, you have the filter on the bottom and everything else is inside. So pretty simple and straightforward. Line it back up, snap your clips back on. And I have another battery here, so we'll chuck that in. We have the switch on. Um, and that's it. So you can just carry this around, do your vacuuming. Really cool. So let's give it a little try. Yeah, really cool. I like it. That's uh, that's really good. I need to invest in the air gun because that's a lot tougher than I thought. Let's uh, continue this tomorrow because I want to get the door open so it's a bit easier to work in there and that's a lot harder than I thought so I need some good swing into those nails. Uh, it's also pretty late, it's making a big racket so I'd rather not disturb the neighbours at this point, I've just moved in, don't want to make enemies yet. So uh, let's continue this tomorrow in the morning. Alright, good morning drafters, day two. And I did a bit of research last night and I found my problem with ha hammering in these nails is uh, they're quite thick, they're quite strong and just trying to drive them in through thick pieces of wood it's too much effort. So having a little research I found you can actually just simply pre-drill the holes with slightly smaller size and that will help you hammer it in. You can also um, rub it on a bit of lubricant like some uh, beeswax or soap and then hammer it in that can help a lot as well. Now I don't have access to those but I can pre-drill the hole. So let's pre-drill and give it a try. It should be much easier. So what I can actually do is I can actually start cutting that part out. So I might just quickly cut that and this thing open up a bit more and then we'll do the other side with the framing.
we're done. I vacuumed, I built the wall, taken the old crappy window blind down. And the final thing is to get the car in, see if it fits. definitely just move that table but um, that's about it really. So the final thing is to plug the car in for charging and I'm done. So that's the first project. I hope you've enjoyed. It's a little bit different because this is going to take a lot of effort to get it to where I want but if you're interested in this kind of stuff then stick around, subscribe, like the video and any comments just put them down below in the video. Help me out because this is all stuff I'm trying to learn as I go just watching YouTube videos and chat GPT and figuring it out myself so if you have any advice leave a comment if you pick out something that I've done wrong leave a comment I can only learn from more experienced people that might be watching this apart from that the next project is going to be to get internet into the next room into the office and that's going to require me to get into the roof of the house and then run the cable through some conduit all the way over here and through the wall because I'll be laying a uh, a cat six cable so I've got a hard wired connection straight to the router here. This is probably the best way of doing it. It's gonna be a bit of a pain. I hate getting into the roof space but it's gotta be done. So the next video is going to be me trying to get that done. So I hope you enjoyed. Catch you in the next one. Can't believe I did it. This is awesome. I think this is gonna work. <laughs>